Hello and welcome to this lecture on the major mineral calcium. Calcium is the most abundant mineral in your body, comprising about 1 to 2 percent of your adult weight. Calcium provides structure for your bones and your teeth, and it is absorbed by both active transport and passive diffusion. The absorption of calcium depends upon the availability of the active form of vitamin D in your diet. Because remember, one of the primary functions of vitamin D is to help promote calcium absorption. The bioavailability of calcium is decreased by things such as tannins, dietary fiber, phytates, and oxalates, which I'll show you on the next slide what those are. Tannins are compounds that we find in tea and sometimes in certain grains. And these compounds can interfere with the absorption of, for example, calcium as well as iron. Oxalates are compounds that are found in spinach, rhubarb, beet greens, and chocolate, and they interfere with the absorption of both calcium and iron as well. Phytic acid, or phytate, is found in whole grains, bran, and soy foods, and it binds minerals like calcium, zinc, iron, and magnesium, in turn limiting the absorption of these minerals. Phytic acid can be broken down by yeast, so the bioavailability of minerals is actually higher in yeast leavened foods like breads. 99% of the calcium in your body is found as mineral deposits in your bones and your teeth and about 1% of it is found floating around in your intra, intra and extracellular fluid as well as your blood. The functions of calcium in addition to its relationship to bone health is that calcium helps you transmit nerves, contract your muscles, regulate your blood pressure, and also release hormones. Calcium deficiency can lead to low bone mineral density, which is a precursor to conditions like osteopenia and osteoporosis which are usually characterized by increased risk of fracture. In excess, there is an upper limit set for calcium at 2,500 milligrams. It goes down slightly to 2,000 milligrams if you're age 51 or older. Lots of dietary supplements that contain calcium can cause gas, bloating, and constipation. And as with any of the minerals, if you get too much of them from a supplemental source, they can cause an increased risk for stone formation. High intake of calcium supplements can cause urinary and blood calcium levels to rise, which in turn leads to headaches, kidney failure, increased risk for tissue calcification, and reduced absorption of other minerals. How much calcium do we need? Well, the calcium, along with vitamin D DRIs, were recently in the last few years revised. And the new DRIs say that males who are 19 to 70 and females who are age 19 to 50 need 1,000 milligrams of calcium per day. For males greater than 70 and females 51 and older, the RDA goes up slightly to 1,200 milligrams a day. Now keep in mind that the typical cup of milk has about 300 milligrams a day. So if you're one of those older males or females needing 1,200 milligrams a day, that means you're gonna need about the equivalent of four cups of milk a day. And to be honest, most people in the United States aren't drinking that much milk. So it's a good idea to fill the gap either with a calcium supplement or other sources of calcium, which I'll show you in a minute. In the U.S., the average intake is 800 milligrams of calcium for women and 1,000 milligrams per day for men. So men do a better job of coming close to meeting their needs than do females. What are the best sources of calcium? Well, dairy foods are the best sources of calcium. Things like milk, yogurt, and cheese naturally contain calcium. Although there are other things like dark green leafy vegetables, almonds, legumes, sardines. Anytime you have canned fish with bones, you're eating the calcium deposits of that other organism, so you get some calcium there. And also fortified juices. Things like orange juice, of course, never had calcium in them to begin with, but manufacturers add calcium to foods that people already drink a lot of, for example, like orange juice, in the event that they're not getting their calcium from dairy products. If you're lactose intolerant, you can get calcium from milk alternatives, like calcium-fortified soy, almond, and rice milk, or from tofu, provided that it's set with calcium salts. Read your ingredient list to look for the word calcium if you do buy tofu. Calcium supplements play a good role for people who don't get all their calcium from foods alone. If you're like the typical American, you're not getting 1,000 or 1,200 milligrams of calcium a day. So calcium supplements can help fill that nutrient gap. Calcium supplements are recommended for people like those who have lactose intolerance, 
milk allergies. Um, if you're an ovo vegetarian, remember an ovo vegetarian would eat eggs but not milk and dairy. Vegans have no dairy foods, so there's no calcium there. Or anyone else on a low calcium diet would perhaps benefit from a calcium supplement. A good rule of thumb is to keep your calcium supplementation to less than 500 milligrams per dose. Most calcium pills are 500 milligrams in a single capsule, although they can vary, so check your ingredient list. The body can't absorb more than 500 milligrams at a time, so if you've been prescribed 1,000 milligrams of supplemental calcium per day, split that up into two 500 milligram doses. Some other tips for safety is look for the USP label, which indicates a, a non-biased third-party review of that product. There's two primary sources of calcium supplements, calcium carbonate and calcium citrate. Calcium carbonate requires stomach acid for maximal absorption, so it should be taken with food. In calcium carbonate, 40% of the supplement is calcium. In calcium citrate, it doesn't matter. You can take it with food or without food. But with calcium citrate, only 21% of that supplement is calcium. So most people find that calcium carbonate is a more affordable way and a more bioavailable way to take calcium supplements. But again, remember to take that with food for optimal absorption. Here's a little bit more about calcium supplements. You're advised to choose calcium supplements that contain calcium carbonate or calcium citrate. Avoid products that contain aluminum and magnesium they might actually reduce calcium loss. Calcium is best absorbed when taken in doses of 500 milligrams or less. If you take 500 milligrams twice a day, that provides about 100% of the RDA for most male and female groups. It's a good idea if you're taking calcium to also take a product with vitamin D to assure that all the calcium in that vitamin will be available for calcium absorption. Antacids can also be a source of calcium. These are over the drug or over the counter meds, so they carry a drug fax panel rather than a supplement fax panel. Lastly, I just want to talk briefly about the relationship between soda and milk. We know that people who drink a lot of soda tend not to drink enough milk. There's also data indicating that high soda intake drinkers have lower bone mineral density than do milk drinkers. And that's because, of course, well, for two reasons. First of all, Milk contains calcium where a soda does not, okay? but also um, there's phosphorus, especially in colas, and it's thought that a high phosphorus diet may, may play a role in reducing calcium, although it's more likely to be the displacement of calcium from the diet if you're drinking a lot of soda that's the problem and not necessarily the phosphorus content. If you look at the nutrient comparison here, drinking a soda gives you 150 calories in 12 ounces, okay? but really not a whole lot else. But if you drink milk, you're getting a ton of good nutri nutrition for that 150 calories, um, as well as things like phosphorus and calcium, um, and much more phosphorus actually in milk than in cola. So this notion about phosphorus and bone health, it's not really a, a primarily thought of as one of the major reasons why soda intake reduces bone health. It's more so the fact that if you're drinking a lot of soda, there's probably not any room in your diet for milk. And you rarely meet people who drink a lot of soda and also drink a lot of milk. They're usually inversely correlated. If you drink a lot of milk, you're not drinking soda. If you drink a lot of soda, you're not drinking milk.